All right, so I've digitally inked the head. If I want to see that on its own, I can just turn off my background sketch and see what those inking lines are doing. They look pretty clean, they look pretty smooth. I just got to do the body now. And maybe for the body, because I don't need it to be quite so thick or pull so much attention, I can zoom out a little bit and do more in one pass. So remember, you want to do this on your digital ink layer. What was I doing right before? Yeah, I was playing with the plumage. So if I'm happy with that, see, I might distort that a little bit more. So you can make your line art with multiple layers if you want, but ultimately you want to merge it all into one layer just so you can treat it all the same. Yeah, I think that works. All right, so I'm going to merge these together. I'm just going to put the digital ink titled one on the top so it keeps the name. And I'm going to keep going. If you ever make like a little sp sp splash of ink where you don't want it, just circle it with your lasso and delete it. And then get back to inking. Check your settings. And now let's see if I can do a lot of this in just one pass. Try not to be too perfectionist. Sometimes you got to break it up. You make this wing a little bit bigger. Let it go to its edge, and it's better to cross and have too much than to have too little and have to fill it in. So then you can just use your lasso to taper it. And delete. The thumb's a pretty big focal point, so I'm going to thicken that line a little bit with a little bit more pressure. Try to get that shape right where I want it. Get that arc into the shoulder. And though you might do what's called drawing through when you do basic shapes or you're penciling, where I would just do these as complete ovals when I'm inking. I want to only show the ink where it should appear. So I don't have more to clean up later. Palm of the hand, I'm going to shrink a little bit and then leave a little bit more room for these feathers. And the neck. Now, even though there might be openings in my sketch between the lines, I'm trying to really let the lines fully overlap and contain shapes. So that when I select them with contiguous pixels with my magic wand, it won't select the outside. It will only select within the shape that I want which is going to help with my digital coloring. Increase the size of these feathers at the ankle a little bit. I'm going to let them taper off. And then I'm not thrilled with how that looks. So I'm going to try rotating it and getting a different angle on it.
And I like all of it except for that final curve. So I'm going to redo that. At a different angle. I might thicken the line a little bit here. The tail. Also in my inking, I'm trying to avoid tangencies. That's problems in design where you have uncomfortable touching. So for instance, if I had the tail run into this line, that just wouldn't look very good design-wise. So I try to give everything some space, some breathing room. If you want more control of your line weight, try zooming in and it will let you taper a little bit easier. Go thick to thin. But of course, the more you zoom in, the longer it will take. But it's better than having to do it over and over again. A little texture on these knuckles. And then I'm going to actually decide here, this is a good example of where I want to contain things. The foot's going to be a different color than the, the thigh. So I'm actually going to add a line here that's not in my sketch just to break it up so that the foot is separate. But I have to decide where that line's going to be. I'll put it a little bit higher up. There we go. Okay, and then the last leg. And then we'll be ready to save this and set it up for coloring, or first turning it into a vector, which is exactly what I want to be able to show you today. And then next class, we'll be coloring underneath that vector. So it's a little like when we added color to our vector logos, but it will be more involved this time because we'll be able to add a lot more color variation. Being critical of my sketch here. So the real magic on the digital side is in the next step. When I feel like I have clean line work and then I want to turn it into a vector. Because that has so many advantages. And whereas before with our logos, we had to create that vector with the pin tool, the pencil tool, plotting each anchor point in vector.com, and then modifying them. We're going to use a program that is relatively new, that is freeware, browser-based, that will live trace for us. What used to be called live trace in Adobe Illustrator is now called image trace. And what it does is it takes raster imagery you give it, pixel-based imagery you give it, like this, and it will trace it into vector paths. 
very helpful. All right, so it's going to clean up this little bit, and then I might add a little tapering. So use my lasso, just trim it. It's a lot like using the pencil tool in Illustrator, but we didn't do that in this class, so like using moving anchor points around on a vector to treat the inside and the outside edge. And I think I just want to taper these a little bit. Just fill them in with my brush. And again, they don't need to be perfect. Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. So does it matter that there's a little bump there? No, it doesn't matter at all in the scheme of things. Whoops. Or a little bit that needs to be filled in there. This isn't. These aren't logos, and they're not even a vector yet. So a lot of this will get simplified in that process. But it's human nature. Try to make it as good as you can. All right. Did I miss anything? Not that I can see. So I'm going to save it. And now I've already posted my sketch. The next thing I'm going to post is my vector line art, which I don't have yet. I have clean raster line art. But I want to post my vector here. So what do I do? I turn off the sketch layer. I turn my onion skin layer all the way to 100%. And I look at it at full resolution. So I'm going to say view show. Nope, that's not right. I'm going to say <laughs> view pixel to pixel. And I'm going to see that this looks like a pretty clean set of line art, right? Even if there's little things that could be tweaked and improved, I'm not going to obsess about them. Because we work towards a deadline. But if there's little things that are going to be a focal point, like that little bump in the thumb, since the thumb is such a focal point, then I might just trim that. So that's why it's helpful to view it at full pixel resolution. There we go. Okay. So, saved as a Photoshop file. Now, I'm going to export it as a JPEG. And this looks like finished line art because it's high resolution, 3,500 pixels by 3,500 pixels. But it is not a vector yet. And we want to turn it into a vector. So what I call these files that transition into being traced as a vector, I call them test files. I'll usually mark them something like purple. I've got my PSD. All right. So now what do I do with that? Go to the assignment. And you'll see underneath all of these examples, especially the one from David Sasella that shows the vector line art with its anchors, we can vectorize my pixel-based line art into a vector. You can do that by doing image trace in Illustrator or try this free service at the link below to output your, output your line art as an SVG or EPS files, the two kind of portable vector formats. We're going to do it as an SVG. So I'm going to click on this site, Vectorizer AI. I don't think there's much AI here, but then I take my test file and I drag it in. And then it will tell me its limitations. 